the stories about the Springsteen side of the family is that there is one of the crucial things to understand about them is that there is a you know that thread in their DNA that uh, carries a certain amount of mental instability. Manic depression ran sort of thick in their family. Depression, and uh, his father Douglas suffered severely from from manic depression, untreated, undiagnosed, because the working poor, which is what the Springsteens. Um, were in freehold, and in fact have been going back generations and generations. I mean, coming from people who were farming potatoes mm -hmm. or, or, you know, just working the land, becoming people who, in the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, became, you know, worked the factories and came up through, you know, his father signed on at like 14 years old to be a Creole boy at the Caragusian rug mill in freehold, which employed a significant percentage of, 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 of you know, the men and the families in, in Freehold, um, that there was, you know, the, the, this, this, this sort of very unrelenting stream of, of mental disturbance. There were relatives that you couldn't talk about. There were people who ended up sort of, you know, living in the attic rooms, the bedrooms, and those were the rooms you didn't go into, and the stories that never really got told about members of the Springsteen family. And so he grew up in a, in a somewhat sort of haunted environment. Um, and especially, which would in you know, his more immediate family was exacerbated by the death of his father's older sister, Virginia Springsteen, who died you know, as a five-year-old in a you know, tragic triangle, or excuse me, a tricycle accident. She rode her trike out into the street and, and was run over by an oil truck right there just around the corner on McLean, Ave uh, McLean Street from, from where Bruce's you know, father was, was being raised. And the, this darkness, this gloom kind of overtook this house on Randolph Street. And his father grew up with that and, all, and also with that mental illness gene that was running through his family. And by the time Bruce was um, you know, born and growing up in that house, all these different threads kind of wove together. There was this, this sadness of the, the tragedy. Mm -hmm. There was the mental illness that had claimed his father, who was manic depressive through his life and untreated and undiagnosed for so many years. And so, you know, and there was this, you know, his grandparents had essentially been almost emotionally incapacitated by the death of their daughter in 1927. And so Bruce became the first, like, piece of life that had come into their house since the death of their daughter. And, and he became symbolic to them on levels that were so meaningful to them that it became a very damaging force in his family. Uh, that they, and for the first five or six years of his house, he, he, or for, of his life, he came to understand that his grandparents were his, his parents. They were his primary caregivers because his father was you know, either working or unemployed and off on some manic depressive arc. And his mother worked full time to keep things together. But, you know, this was a house where the windows were cracked and the house was coming off its foundation, literally, as well as figuratively. And, uh, you know, his grandparents worshiped the ground he walked on because he was a missing daughter brought back to life. And so there was this terrible sense of, of loss and and, you know, and just, just hauntedness in the family, but also as a result of his, of his mom's experience as a recent Italian-American, also this, this burning sense of just, you know, this work ethic, that you're gonna make it in America, 